Hello there. Today we're looking at the composition of the atmosphere. As you look out the window, you may see clouds, smoke, dust blowing. You'll even see perhaps a blue sky. These are all parts of the visible atmosphere. The sources of this dust and smoke include traffic from the roads, factories, suburbs, and mine dumps, creating the thick layer of smog that we know so well over Johannesburg. What we're concerned with today is more the invisible atmosphere. These are the gases that make up the bulk of the atmosphere. So if we look at a clean, dry atmosphere, i.e. no water, no clouds, no dust, no smoke, then we can look at the composition of the atmosphere. The composition is what is it made of? Well, the most important component of the clean, dry atmosphere is nitrogen. Nitrogen makes up a full 78% of the atmosphere. Now, a lot of people would say nitrogen is not important, but in fact, it's immensely important. If we all took away all the nitrogen instantly, then we would explode. So nitrogen provides pressure. And it, that pressure is very important because it allows a lot of things to happen, like wind, all sorts of other atmospheric processes, and literally holds us together. So the most important role of nitrogen is simply to provide pressure, although, of course, nitrogen is an important part of life processes. The next most important one is oxygen, most important in terms of volume. And oxygen makes up 21%. And as you know, Oxygen is essential to life. If we didn't have oxygen, we would soon suffocate and die. After oxygen, in terms of volume, argon makes up less than 1%. Those two together make up 99%. Argon makes up less than 1%, and in fact is completely unimportant. Um, it is what is known as an inert gas. pretty much does nothing. Then there's a whole bunch of gases called the trace gases. Now, there are numerous trace gases, but there are three very important ones. And these are carbon dioxide, CO2, methane, which is CH4, and ozone, which is O3. Right. Now, these three gases are very important because they participate in a whole series of processes, um, some of which lead to the whole concept of global warming. And particularly CO2 and CH4 are implicated in global warming, and ozone, O3, is very important in terms of protecting us from various radiation, which we'll talk about in a minute. Right, so let's have a look at the greenhouse gases and what role they play. The greenhouse, CO2, and methane, in fact, and along with water, um, are very important because they are the ones that are contributing to climate change at the, mo at the moment. Now, CO2 makes up approximately 0.04% of atmospheric gases. Another way of looking at that, and which is commonly quoted in the press, is to say that CO2 makes up 400 parts per million of the atmosphere. So 400 parts per million means that for every million atoms in the atmosphere, every million molecules, 400 of them are carbon dioxide. Then methane makes up a very tiny fraction of it, but it is a very potent greenhouse gas. Potent greenhouse gas. Potent meaning that it is much more powerful at absorbing energy than even CO2 is. So it's a potent greenhouse gas, GHG, shall we call it. And these two together are the ones primarily responsible for the present climate change that we are undergoing. Now, what's interesting about that is that if we go back to Roman times, and in Roman times they used to bury people in lead caskets, completely sealing in any gas, and it would have 
bubbles in it that would trap the gas at the time. And so scientists have been able to take 2,000-year-old Roman caskets, coffins, made of lead, and get the air out of them. And they've discovered that the CO2 content in those 2,000-year-old gas samples is about 250 parts per million compared to 400 parts per million today. Now this is very, very significant, and this is the major cause for the climate change that we're going, undergoing at the moment. There is no debate anymore about climate change, except amongst a few ignorant people. Climate change is real, and it has been going on for approximately the last 100 years, aggressively and dangerously. Right, well, let's leave these gases there now, and we will come back to ozone a bit later on in the next lesson.